Jordan from AutoAid. Uh, today we're going to be looking at this 2011 Ford Edge. It's kind of got a strange issue actually. Um, it's got a misfire at wide open throttle at around 6500 RPM. It lasts for a split second and then goes away. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but uh, I guess what we're going to have to start to do is uh, hook the scope up, or sorry, hook the uh, scan tool up to it and uh, see what we got for codes and go from there. Okay, so we're going to open up the IDS here. I think what we'll do here is just start by scanning the vehicle for codes, see what kind of codes we've got in this thing, and then... Uh, Take this vehicle on a, a quick road test with the scans we hooked up to it to see um, to see if we can replicate the issue first of all. Uh, and the IDS also has a really good tool uh, called a power balance test, and uh, you're able to pinpoint exactly um, exactly which uh, cylinder is misfiring. Um, now we do already have a file for this open because I was down at a customer's shop, but uh, it's a really bizarre issue. So um, we decided to bring it back to our shop here for further uh, investigating. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the check mark there to continue on with uh, the file we've already got started. Okay, so uh, what we want is under powertrain and power balance. Got to have the vehicle running for this as well. Okay, now uh, let's take the vehicle for a road test and see if we can get it to act up. <clears throat> so this thing only does it at high RPM under load, so... There are shops on here is not that long. The speed limit's only 50, so I think what I'm gonna do is put it in first gear and just not let it shift. Hold around 6,500 RPM and see if it does it. feeling when we go to check it for codes we're gonna have a cylinder two and six code bummer is that the power balance doesn't work at high rpm it just it comes up excessive rpm but as you come down you can see it's still misfiring it's you can tell it's on two and six so it's okay that it doesn't work at high rpm you can still see it. yeah right there it's really bad this thing does like i'm i'm almost full throttle and it's barely moving At least we can get it to do it on demand, so that's nice for a change. But, uh, right. Go to road test now that we're back. Let's uh, focus back in on the scan tool and just check and make sure there's no other codes there. Just uh, make sure that's just uh, misfire codes and nothing else. Okay, so to scan this vehicle for codes on the Ford scan tool, we have to click self-test. 
And then from there, we go into the powertrain menu, hit engine and key on engine running on demand self test. During the on demand self test, um, it asks you to meet a couple conditions vehicles not moving, transmission in park, normal stuff. Uh, and then the vehicle runs through um, a list of self tests. Uh, you'll hear the cooling fans come on, um, a bunch of lights will flash on the dash. Uh, it's just the vehicle testing um, a bunch of different systems. And then it asks you to uh, press and release the brake pedal, turn the steering wheel, um, cycle the overdrive switch, stuff like that. And, and this can take uh, up to, sometimes up to five minutes to complete, depending on the vehicle. So um, this one I've cut down, because uh, this one did take about two or three minutes, and I, I've cut it down a little bit. Um, so it should go through relatively quickly. Okay, now the self-test has finished. We can see there are several codes here. Uh, we have one on-demand trouble code, which is the AC demand out of self-test range. That just means I didn't have the AC turned on when we were uh, doing the self-test, which is fine, we can ignore it. Uh, but it looks like we do have some misfire codes. Uh, P0302, cylinder two misfire. Status AF, which means the fault is currently present. Uh, we also have a P0306, uh, also status AF, uh, cylinder six misfire, fault is currently present. Um, and then we have a P0316, misfire detected on startup, status 28, not current DTC, so it was previously detected, so we're not going to worry about that one too much. Uh, and then these pending and permanent DTCs, we're going to ignore those for now. Uh, we just want to kind of focus on the uh, on-demand and continuous memory codes. All right, now that we're actually able to experience the issue and verify that the vehicle is actually misfiring, um, I think the next step we should do is hook the scope up to it and see exactly what we're losing, whether we're losing coils, uh, injectors or if it's something else. So uh, what we're going to do real quick is just have a look at a wiring diagram here and uh, see where we can hook the scope up to it. I'm thinking we should probably do current on both the uh, injectors and the um, coils. So I'm just going to have a look at the wiring diagram, see if there's a place where we can pick up all six coils and injectors. Um, hopefully all the wires are right beside each other in the same connector, that way we can just pick up all six right on the connector at the ECM and um, have a look and see if we're missing anything, see if anything's dropping out. So. Um, I'm just going to pull up the screen here and we can have a look at the wiring diagram. Hopefully they are all next to each other on the ECM. Uh, the injectors are kind of close together. We can probably work with that. You can see them here one through five. Um, we've got injector six on pin 19 so we could probably get those into the one uh, into the jaw the current probe pretty easily um, so we've got the coils going in here too but they're kind of all over the place we've got number six here number one four and two here so we may have to we may have to grab um, the coils on the uh, the power input to the coils on this uh, main uh, the common power going into them that might be the easiest for that but on the injectors we can definitely get them at the ECM um, okay, so that's simple enough. Uh, let's see what connector. C175E, so that makes it easy. They're all on the same connector. Uh, 70 pin connector. I think that's probably going to be a big one on the ECM, but let's just double check to make sure. Okay, so we are dealing with the middle connector here, so that's, uh, okay, easy enough. Right under the firewall like usual. Um, okay, so let's open the hood on this thing and uh, start digging in and uh, get the scope hooked up. Okay, so here we have our scope shot. Uh, the green trace is going to be our cam signal. The red trace is our crank signal, the blue is going to be our um, injector current, and the yellow is going to be our coil current. Uh, now in this screenshot, you can see that uh, right in the middle of the screen where the uh, blue trace kind of drops off, that's where our misfire starts. Uh, before that, you can see we've got nice even injector pulses, uh, everything looks good. And uh, right in the middle of the screen there, it just that's where it starts misfiring and it just drops right off. I'm um, just going to zoom in now and have a look um, and see exactly 
what it looks like on the cam and crank to make sure there's no discrepancies in the cam or crank signal. Uh, when we're looking at the cam and crank right as it drops off on the injector um, trace, um, I don't see anything wrong with the crank or cam signal that would indicate um, a misfire or why this, why the injectors would all of a sudden just stop firing. Um, what I'm going to do now, we're going to take another screenshot, uh, I'll look at another screenshot from before uh, the misfire, misfire started happening. Um, it's going to be a screenshot of the injector pulse and you can see we have nice even injector pulses. Uh, but if we continue on past the uh, misfire event and have a look at the um, injector pulses then, you can see that there are several missing. Uh, now I'm not sure what's happening first here, whether it's the vehicle detecting a misfire and then the ECM is shutting off the injectors to save the catalytic converter, or whether the, those missing injectors are the actual misfire itself. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that those missing injectors are what's causing the misfire. I think they are a symptom of the misfire. And what I mean by that is I believe it is the ECM shutting down the injectors uh, to save the catalytic converters because it thinks that there is a misfire. And I've seen it on many other vehicles where there's something that I call a, a phantom misfire where it's clocking misfires, but uh, the vehicle's running fine. It's not actually misfiring. I see it a lot on GM vehicles. Um, it's where the misfire profile gets messed up and uh, at certain RPMs the uh, ECM will just start clocking misfires like crazy even though the vehicle's running fine. And usually what fixes that uh, is a crank, um, crank variation learn. It just relearns the misfire profile and uh, that takes care of the phantom misfires. I kind of think that's what's going on with this vehicle um, because there's, there really isn't a misfire that we can see. Um, I believe it's just the ECM that thinks there's a misfire and then uh, shuts down the injectors and, and causes an actual misfire um, after the high RPM misfire event. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is just have a look at the scan tool and see if we can find a, uh, some sort of crank relearn on this vehicle and uh, see if that helps. Okay, so now we're going to fire up the IDS again, and in the main menu, we're going to go down to powertrain, from there, service functions, and then we're going to click on misfire monitor neutral profile correction. From there, it brings us to the next screen, uh, which tells us this should be uh, performed whenever the PCM is replaced, whenever there's internal engine repairs or crank sensor uh, replacement, or when directed by a TSB. Uh, now, according to the customer, they just bought this vehicle. Um, couple weeks ago uh, so it's possible that someone's done a repair and not done this um, relearn uh, so it looks like they want the vehicle in park or neutral air conditioning off no power steering loads and engine at normal operating temperature and from there we click the check mark and it wants the engine temperature at 80 degrees Celsius so uh, we're going to just have to sit here for a few minutes with the engine running and uh, wait for that temperature to climb up to at least 80 degrees. I'll uh, speed up this process here um, and uh, get us up to 80 quickly. Okay, now that we've reached 80 degrees, we're going to hit the check mark and continue on to the next screen. All right, so to erase the existing misfire profile correction and enable learning of a new profile, select the tick, the check mark, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, to learn a new value, raise the RPM above the threshold value, quickly and fully release the throttle and allow the engine to return to idle. Monitor the PIDs to determine learning progress and if the down count does not reach zero, repeat the above procedure. Do not exit until complete. The misfire monitor will not function without a uh, misfire monitor neutral profile correction. So we're just going to bring the RPMs up to that threshold there. And 
we get to about 3100 we're going to release the throttle as you can see as we release it it starts to count down but uh, didn't quite reach zero so we're going to have to do that one more time And there we go. It uh, count down to zero and learned the uh, misfire profile. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and clear the, uh, well we're going to scan it for codes, uh, clear the misfire codes and then take it for another road test and see if uh, the issue has uh, gone away. Okay, so after clearing the codes, we took the vehicle for another road test with the scope hooked up, and uh, on this scope shot we have the uh, same as before, cam and crank, uh, and then coil and injector current, and believe it or not, after doing that misfire profile correction relearn, uh, the vehicle runs and drives totally fine. A bunch of uh, wide open throttle accelerations, and uh, the vehicle did not misfire once, no engine light, no codes came back, uh, nothing like that. So. Um, exactly kind of what I thought uh, was going on um, was in fact what was happening it was uh, somehow that misfire profile got messed up and uh, it thought the vehicle was misfiring at high RPM when really it wasn't and uh, it was kicking the injectors off so that was kind of an interesting one and uh, in the end all that it took to repair this vehicle was doing that misfire uh, profile relearn